For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And this, this, this passage is the second uh, letter of Paul to the Corinthians. And you know the first letter of Corinthians Paul wrote because he had heard some news in the church that there were trouble, sexual immorality, and so forth. And you know, and, and all the stuff that we're doing, when Paul heard that, he, he felt so bad. And so he wrote the, the book of 1 Corinthians, addressing the issues of the church in Corinth. And but the, the, the church of Corinth ignored what Paul said. Na sasa tunaona kwamba kanisa la Wakorinto hawakutambua waraka wa waraka wa Paulo. And, he, and Paul personally went to deal with these Corinthians before he wrote the book of 2 Corinthians. Tunaona kwamba sasa alichukua nafasi na kwenda huko uh, kabla hajaandika waraka wa pili. He went there and he confronted them and they still didn't listen. They still had disobedience. They were still rebelling against the authority that Jesus Christ had given Paul. And so 2 Corinthians, he's writing this letter. He's addressing the new issues that is coming to the church. The issues not only of division, but the issues of the church rebelling against the authority of Paul and questioning against the authority of Paul. And so now in, in, in chapter 10, Paul starts defending himself. He starts saying, he starts saying, I am an apostle of Christ. And I'm, I'm going to prove it to you guys through this letter. And now, now what, what's interesting is, Paul said, you guys think that we walk according to the flesh, but no, we're not facing the flesh. See, what's happening in the church, he says, see, what's happening to the church, the division, the sexual immorality, it has more to it than the flesh. It was, it was more than the flesh. It wasn't just in the flesh. It was in a spiritual level as well. And Paul said we do not wage war against the flesh. He said the division that's in the church, all that, that is not just the flesh. It is a spiritual matter. That's what he was basically trying to say at this point. It's a spiritual battle and our weapons are a different kind of weapons. It's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not going out and bubbling and having conflict with others. And Paul didn't want, was not interested in going and disputing with them. He was interested in dealing with the power of Satan that was behind the problem in the church. And, and Paul says, for the weapon of God, the weapon of God is powerful to bring down strongholds, demonic power, demonic strongholds. Casting down every imagination, every spirit, everything that opposes.
opposes the name of Jesus Na Christ. Ondoa kila hali yoyote ya kishetani inayopinga freeing people freeing the minds of people freeing the lives of people from the captivity of sin kuokoa watu kutoka kwenye nyayo za 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 dhambi and, and to bring them to the captivity of the obedience of the Holy Ghost. Na kuwaweka sasa kwenye mikono salama ya kwenye And and today I want to talk about spiritual warfare. Sasa leo ngoja ni niongee kuhusu vita za kiroho. And 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 this this is really a key verse in 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 today's preaching. Ah na na mstari huu ni mstari ambao nitasimamia hapo. And you know why because this verse Paul says very interesting thing. Paul was actually basically saying what we face kwa sababu kwa sababu hapa Paulo alikuwa anasema uh, juu ya mambo yanayotoaandama kila siku and he says what we facing is powers akasema kwamba tunaandamwa na nguvu principalities mipango ya giza imagination and, and all this evil vitu zote vya kishetani in other words we are facing the flesh and we are facing satan mambo mengine ni kwamba tunacho pigana nacho ni shetani na mwili and you know and and paul is saying we bringing everybody we we freeing people from the bondage of sin by the power of jesus christ by the will of god and bringing them to the obedience of the holy ghost ai kwa nasema sasa kwamba ni lazima tuwavute watu kutoka kwenye nyayo za shetani tuwarete kwenye mikono ya Yesu Kristo and you know in the sixth verse say something very interesting having in readiness to revenge all disobedience when obedience is fulfilled mustari wa wa sita nao unaongea kwamba tena tukiwa tayari tu tupatiliza maasi yote kutii kwenu kwenu kutakapotimia you know in the book of revelation 3 uh, 3 verse 14 if you read all the way to to 24 it's a, jesus is saying i know ukisoma kitabu kile cha ufunuo wa yohana sura ya 3 kuanzia mstari wa kwanza mpaka no, ch- chapter 14 uh, chapter 3 verse 14 to 24 ukisoma ufunuo wa Yohana sura ya 3 kuanzia 14 mpaka 24 and and he said and Jesus Christ said he says i know your deeds i know what you do in secret i know akasema Yesu anasema ninajua yote ambayo unayafanya and he says i know and i see and you guys are serving two masters you are like serving two akasema kwamba naona jinsi gani mnaweza kujaribu kuwatumikia wafalme wa Mungu you are like look what you like hot and cold at the same time akasema sasa hamko baridi na hamko moto and he says because you are like that i will spit you out of my mouth sasa neno la Mungu linasema kwamba kwa sababu hamko baridi au moto nitawatapika kutoka kwenye kichwa changu But then he start giving that at the end Jesus start giving comforting words. Lakini sasa mwishoni unaweza kuona kwamba ana anaendelea na kuwa kuwatuliza watu. And, and, and you know and he said you know why I'm strict? That's what basically was saying. He said you know why I'm strict with you guys? Akasema unajua kwa nini ni lazima niwe mkali kidogo hapa? Because the people are love, the people who obey me when they do a mistake, I'm ready to discipline them akasema kwamba wale ambao wamekosea ni lazima awa awakemee so basically paul saying our job is not only to bring everybody to the captivity of uh, into the captivity of the obedience of the holy spirit apa uh, paulo anaendelea kusema kwamba kazi yetu sio tu kuwaleta watu kutoka kwenye nyayo za shetani to discipline them and make sure they remain in faith ni kuwapatia mwelekezo na kuwaonya ili walinde imani yao. Kwa nini sasa wabakie na walinde imani yao? Kwa sababu shetani anawapiganisha. And so in James we're going to read the book of James chapter. kusoma kitabu cha Yakobo sura 4 James chapter 4 verse uh, James chapter 4 verse 3 to 7. Yakobo 4 kuanzia tatu mpaka saba Yakobo 4:3 hadi 7 Hata mwaomba vibaya 
hata maomba wala ampati kwa sababu mwaomba vibaya ili ili mtumie kwa tamaa zenu nne enyi wasizi amjui ya kwamba kuwa rafiki wa dunia ni kuwa adui wa Mungu basi kila atakaye kuwa rafiki wa dunia ujifanya kuwa adui wa Mungu tamu au madhani ya kwamba maandiko yasema kule huyo roho akae ndani yetu ututa ututamani kiasi cha kuona vitu wivu sita lakini atujalia utujalia sisi neema iliyo sisi kwa hiyo tusema Mungu uwapinga wajikuzao bali uwapa neema kwa kinyikeo saba basi mtiene Mungu mpingeni shetani naye atawakimbia amen Read the book of James chapter 4 verse 3 to 7 and it says ye ask and receive not because ye ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your lust ye adulterers and adulteresses know ye not that friendship of the world is enmity with God whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God do you think that the scripture said in vain the spirit that dwelleth in us lusteth to envy but he giveth more grace Wherefore he said God resisteth the proud but giveth grace unto the humble Submit yourself therefore to God resist the devil and he will flee So at this verse is now starting to tell us why most of the time why God doesn't answer us because we tend to fall into the temptation of lust we tend to fall into all these different types of temptation Hapa sasa mstari huu unaanzia kuonyesha kwa sababu gani tunaomba lakini hatu pewi kwa sababu sasa tunaingia kwenye mitego hii ya usizi na uasherati and he says the reason why most of the time the reason why i don't i don't answer because you pray wrong not only because of that but because you 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 are becoming friends with the world or, or, or the stuff of the world anasema inasema sasa hapa kwamba ni ni si wajibu sio kwamba mnaomba vibaya tu lakini mnatafuta kuwa marafiki na dunia and all of this is very tempting because you know what sin always look attractive you know hivi hivi joto sasa ni vitu vya kutu vya kutuweka chini unajua dhambi inavutia sin is very sin is very attractive the social media we see the social life we see people have in front it's very attractive really Uta, utakwenda kuangalia uone kwamba dhambi watu wengi wanaikimbilia inakuwa ni ina, ina nguvu fulani ya kuvuta watu especially me as a young man sin looks very attractive and i'm having to pray and i'm having to fast and i'm having to meditate the word of god and do all this just to resist the temptation nitatoa nitatoa mfano kwangu ninaona kwamba dhambi inanivuta sana lakini ninajepusha nayo nikitafuta kutafakari juu ya neno la mungu And so basically what James was trying to say is that first you got to submit yourself to God then you can resist the devil. At sasa Yakobo hapa ameandika kwamba tunapaswa kumtii Mungu na shetani sasa ndipo anaweza kutukimbia. And let me tell you a, 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 new, a new fact about about Jesus. You know Jesus every morning uh The Bible says every morning he would go out in the he would go out in the mountain before the sun came out. Ngoja niwaambie kuhusu habari moja kuhusu Yesu Kristo. Biblia inasema kwamba kila siku kabla jua haijachanua Yesu Kristo alikuwa anapanda kwenye mlima. He would go out in the mountain and he would pray and pray and pray until it was morning or the sun came out. Alikuwa anaenda huko kila asubuhi akahakikisha kwamba ameomba mpaka jua the time when he was coming down the mountain when the disciple looked they could see the glory of God. Na kipindi hicho alikuwa anatoka kwenye milima hiyo wanafunzi walikuwa wanaona kwamba amebadilika wanaona nguvu ya Mungu kwenye uso wake. And so whenever Jesus came down and he faced demons and he faced temptation Jesus did not do long prayers. You know? Sasa alipokuwa anatoka huko kwenye mlima na ikaja nguvu yote ya shetani mapepo mapepo hayo yalikuwa hayana nguvu. You guys ever noticed that Jesus never did long prayers. He just said get out and he was gone. Na ukiangalia maombi ya Yesu Kristo alikuwa anasema 
ondoka na pepo hapo hapo anatii na kuondoka mara moja. You know what because God prepared because Jesus prepared himself by submitting himself unto God in prayers. Kwa sababu sasa Yesu alikuwa amejiandaa na kumtii Mungu and having that connection with God. Na akawa sasa na ile uhusiano kati yake na Mungu. He was having that connection. Akawa na ile uhusiano And you know in the book of John chapter 15 verse 7. Ah, ukisoma kitabu cha Yohana 15:7. And Jesus Christ said, and I know Pastor quote this a lot. He says, if his word, well, if you dwell in his word, and if he and if his word dwell in you, you shall ask for anything, and it shall be given unto you. Neno la Mungu kwenye Yohana 15:7 linasema kwamba ukikaa ndani yake na yeye akae ndani yako chochote kile ambacho utakiomba kitakuja kupitika. So first we know that we are facing real demons, we are facing principalities, we are facing powers according to Paul. Sasa ni lazima utoe kwamba tunacho tunacho kipigana tunacho pigana nacho sasa ni nguvu zote za aina yote kutoka kwenye ulimwengu wa giza. And he says we have a weapon, a weapon that can bring down strongholds a weapon that can destroy the plan of the devil lakini akasema kwamba kuko silaha ambayo inaweza kuchana chana ngome zote za giza but first we got to submit ourselves to god unatoa kwamba unapaswa kunyenyekea mbele za mungu na kumtii in repentance and prayer hiyo sasa inaambatana na kutubu pamoja na maombi you can't face the devil with, with, with all your sin, you know. Hakuna siku moja kwenye maisha yako ambayo unaweza kukaribiana na shetani ukiwa na dhambi. I mean, if, you, if anybody ever read the book of Acts of the Apostle, the seven sons of, of the high priest, you, you know what they did? They tried casting out the devil. Ungeso kama ni msomaji mzuri na wewe umesoma kwenye matendo ya mitume, wakati wale vijana walimkaribia shetani, mtu mwenye pepo. And you know and they and they went to Jesus that Paul preaches. Walimsogelea ile mtu ambaye amejazwa na nguvu za giza wakasema kwa jina la Yesu ambaye anahubiriwa na we say we cast you out we say be gone. Tunasema ondoka. The spirit just stand up like what what's, what's happening? Na 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 yule mtu sasa pepo wakaanza kutoka wasema the spirit was like okay first of all hold on hold on well, I know Paul Na Yesu ni namtu. Ni namtu. But who is you? Lakini nini nini ni nani? And you know the reason why is because those people did not submit themselves to God. They were not prepared. Hao watu unapenda kuona kwamba hawakujiandaa. See the weapon we have. Hawakutafuta hii silaha ya kunyenyekea na kutii. And the weapon we have, the, the weapon of submitting ourselves to God, the weapon that we have. Silaha hii ya kunyenyekea na kutii Mungu and also dwelling in the word of God. Na kukaa ndani ya neno. That means doing it just just don't read it. Just not reading it but doing it as well. Sio kwamba ni kusoma tu, ni kuenda kama ni kuishi neno la Mungu. And you know and you know I I've noticed that a lot of people Nimesha ona kwamba watu wengi a lot of people are kind of a hypocrites. Watu wengi una, unaweza kuona kwamba ni, ni wanafiki. And I used to be a hypocrite too. Nami nilikuwa mmoja wapo. You know I, I used to I used to back then when I was back in, in Africa I used to go to Sunday school every Sunday. Wakati nilikuwa bado Africa ni niliwahi kwenda kanisani kila, kila kila wiki. The same mouth that I praise the Lord, the same mouth the one that cuts out my friends. The same mouth that I praise God is the same mouth that I used to go out the next Monday. Mdomo ule ule ambao alikuwa anatumia kumtukuza Mungu, ndio mdomo ule ule alikuwa anatumia kukuasa Mungu, kutukana kufutenda dhambi. Oh, I knew the Bible, I read the Bible all the time. Na nilikuwa ni msomaji tu mzuri wa Bible. I knew the Bible, I knew stories and stories. Nilikuwa na chuo mwanzo.
Kamat ni do pasaman. You know, you know that transition is really hard because the sin is trying to fight for you one side, and God is fighting for you one side, and Satan is like, I know I'm not gonna win, but I wanna take you a little bit. Unapata mfumo huo wa kutoka kwenye dambi na kuingia kwenye utakatifu sio rahisi sana. Dambi hapa na dambi hapa na shetani anatoa kwamba anaweza shindwa lakini kila siku ni lazima tuleta majaribu. Have faith as well. That's the second point I want to talk about. Na kitu cha pili ni kuwa na imani. We we all we all uh, you know they've all had preachings of faith in the church every single time. Have faith, have faith, believe in God. But really, what does faith really really mean? Unaweza kusikia wewe na imani wewe na imani lakini sasa hii imani ambayo inaongelewa ni kitu gani? This is how I think of faith. Sasa mimi na mtazamo wangu God anamwambia ninavyofikiria kuhusu uh, imani. With God nothing is impossible. Ni kwamba pasipo Mungu hakuna kinachowezekana. No. With God nothing is impossible. Pamoja na Mungu hakuna kitu ambacho kinashindikana. And and so and so that's how I think of faith. If you start thinking of faith in that way, in that very specific manner, okay, sasa ukifikiria kwa mtazamo huu you 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 going to pray you going to do wonderful stuff with God. Unaweza kuomba na mambo yanaweza kukaa sawa pamoja na Mungu. This uh, I I the last time I was preaching to uh, I was preaching to the Bible club that I had in the church at school. Na kuna kipindi nilikuwa na ninafundisha huko kuna kikundi ambacho nafundisha huko siku ya Jumatano. And I noticed that my the people I teach in my Bible club they they just say faith faith and really they don't know what faith is. Na jua huko sasa walimu wenzao wana wanasema imani 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 imani. They would they 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 would if somebody was sick they would pray they would be like God, I pray throughout her sickness that until her sickness is going to be done. Something like that. Something about what he. Can it be a kama kuna mtu mgonjo na sema, e mungu, uyo mtu ni mgonjo. It was kind of like God was powerless. Ni walija kwa na ufanya ni kwamba mungu walikuwa na ujasha kwa mba mungu hana mungu yoyo. And then I started telling them, God, there is nothing impossible with God. Luke one thirty seven says. With God, nothing is impossible. Sasa ni kaza kuambia kuna neno mungu ambao ni nakuwa kwenye ruka suri ya kwanza msa wa sasa na sapa mbali na sema kwamba pamoja na mungu hakuna chisi chowezeka. Now, God answered him yes, and God answered him no. Yes. Na kieni sasa mshwe kwamba majibu ya mungu na weza kuandiyo au apa au apa. If God says no, I said, I mean. Mungu akisha sema hapana. That's why when Jesus prayed he said not by my will but by your will because he knew whatever answer God would give will be according to God's will not his will. Na ndio maana sasa Yesu alikuwa anaomba na sema kwa mapenzi yako kwa sababu kuna kipindi Mungu anaweza kusema hapana. And if it's the will of God to say no it's it, it's for your good. Na ukiwa ni mapenzi ya Bwana kusema hapana ujue kwamba hayo yanakuwa sawa. Kwa sababu Mungu anavyotazama dunia wewe si ndivyo unavyofikiria. Na kosa hili Ayub ulimfikia kwa sababu alianza kuuliza Mungu. Okay, Job, you've questioned me. It's my turn. Come, face the Almighty. Let me ask you a question. Let's see what the answer is. Na mungu sasa akashuka, akamuita yo ayubu akasema, njo sasa unikabili. Let me see. Let me see if you can answer how I made the world. What is the foundation of the world? Onyesha mungu yako sasa kama unaweza kujibizana na mimi. Uniambie nisingi ya dunia ito wako. Aona. Na ya kasema siju. Look at all this beast that I've created. Look, look how majestic it is. Akamonyesha kasema angalia. Geuka pa, geuka na angalia ni leri vyo vyo mba mi. It looks so aggressive to you, but it's very tender. You know, it's very, very patient, very calm. The creature, the creature. Akamambia, ini vyo mba vyo vyo mba vyo ni vyo mba. Hatiko vina piga kelele. Unaona kwa mba vyo metulie. And so, and so Job was like, 
Akasema mimi kabisa sina majibu kwa hilo. Then God was trying to teach God the lesson He's like the way I see the world that's not how you see the world. Hii ilikuwa kwamba Mungu alikuwa anataka kumuonyesha Yobu jinsi gani mambo yanakaa. And he says and he says the way I deal with the world is I'm dealing with everybody at the same time. Amen. Amen. And he says I love but I love every single one of them as though that one person was the only person in the world, right? Lakini akasema kwamba ninawapenda wote. And so what, I, what I'm trying to get here is faith is having confidence in a God you you have never you don't know that God. Is having faith is having confidence in a God you don't know. Ni uh, kuwa na imani ni kuwa na matarajio ya mambo kabisa ambayo hauyatu. We know but we know that God is there by the evidence all around us. We know that God is there because of all the evidence that's around us. Tunajua kwamba Mungu anakuwepo kwa sababu ya mambo ambayo tunayaona yakituzunguka. It's kind of like the wind, you really don't see the wind. Ni kama wakikwambia upepo, upepo hauwezi kuwa. But you feel the wind. That's the kind of unaweza upepo unaweza kumsikia. So believing in God, sasa kutumainia Mungu, having confidence that God will fight the battles for you. Ni kuwa na matumaini kwamba Mungu ata atapigana vita kwa ajili yako. Because God is victorious. Kwa sababu Mungu hashindi kwa jambo. Let us go to 2 King chapter 2 uh, King chapter 6. Wafalme wa 2 verse 13 to 18. Wafalme wa 2 kuanzia 13 mpaka 18. The Swahili person is ready. Kama mtu wa Kiswahili anaweza kuwa mko tayari. Wafalme wa 2:6 kuanzia 13 mpaka 18. 6:13 kuanzia 18. Akasema, "Akasema, eneneni ndawa ndawa mko mwangali, mtamwangalie aliko." Nibaki kupeleka watu kwenda kumchukua. Akama akama akaambiwa ya kwamba tazama yuko dosani. 14. Kwa hiyo akapeleka huko farasi na magari na jeshi kubwa wakafika usiku. Wakauzingira mji kule pande zote. 15. Hata asubuhi na mapema mtumishi wake yule mtu wa Mungu alipoondoka na kwenda nje kumbe ana jeshi la watu na farasi na magari wameuzingira mji ule mtumishi wake akamwambia pole wetu bwana wangu tufanyeje 16 aka akamjibu usiogope maana walio pamoja nasi ni wengi kuliko wale walio pamoja nao. Elisha akaoa akasema, "E Bwana, na kusifungue macho yake, apate kuona." Bwana akamfungua macho yule mtumishi, naye akaona. Na tazama kile kilima kilikuwa kimejaa farasi na magari ya moto yaliyomzunguka ya Elisha 18 na walio walio Elisha akamwomba aka Bwana akasema uwapige na kusi watu hawa kwa upofu akawapiga kwa upofu sawa sawa na neno la Elisha amen I, I read the book of 2 Kings 6:13 to 18 And when he said, "Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch," and he was told him, saying, "Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore, send send he here the horses and chariot and a great host." And they came by night and compassed uh, the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host of compass uh, and an host compassed the city. Both with horses and chariot, and his servant said unto him, "Alas, my master, how shall we do? 
Then he answered and he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes, that he may see. And the Lord opened his eyes, opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, and he saw, and behold, mountains was full of horses and chariots of fire about Elisha. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smite them with blindness, according to the word of Elisha. So, Elisha was very confident at this point. Kwa hiyo, tunaweza kuona kwamba Elisha alikuwa na kutumalia mungu, alikuwa na imani. The Syrian king sends, uh, he sends soldiers to the city of Dotem to surround and to capture the men of God. Mufalme wa Syria aliwatuma wanajeshi ili waende wakamuteke Elisha. Because you know in the perspective of kings at those days, uh, Elijah and Elijah, they caused those kings a lot of problems. Sasa, unatua kwamba Elisha na Elia walikuwa wamefanya mambo ya nayo wachukiza awa wafalme. And you gotta understand, once you believe Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you start causing a lot of problems towards Satan. Wakati ule ambapo unamamini Yesu Christo, shetani pare pare anaanza kuwa na shia. That's why he's trying to fight his tribe. Yeah, first of all, once I want to get you out of Jesus, then we can go to hell together. Na ndio maana sasa anafanya mipango ila kuondoa kwenye china lile ili kuondoke naye naye kwenye jehanamu. But Elijah was confident he had faith. Lakini sasa tunaweza kuona kwamba Elisha hapa alikuwa na matumaini ya Mungu. And you know in the Old Testament faith was a rare thing. It was really rare like it was a rare thing. Kwenye agano la kale walikuwa ni wachache tu ambao waliweza kumtumania Mungu kiasi. Every man in the Old Testament that had faith God did something big with them. Wa, unaweza kuona kwamba yeyote yule kwenye agano la kale ambaye alikuwa na imani unaweza kuona kwamba Mungu alimtumia kwa kiasi kikubwa sana. And you know if, if you don't believe you can go in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 you start reading down and 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 the author of the book of Hebrews kama unaweza kama unaweza kupata muda na usome kitabu kile cha Hebrewia 11 na usome kabisa usome waende kusoma and and what the author of Hebrews is telling you is like all these people are the people of the Old Testament Una, all these people had faith and God did something great with them. Unaweza kuona sasa kwamba kitabu kile kitakuonyesha kwamba idadi ya watu wale ni kwamba Mungu aliwatumia sana. And Elijah when when the soldiers came Elijah was just calm. Wakati wanajeshi wale walikuja naona kwamba Elisha yeye alikuwa anatulia. Jesus was panicked he was like man what we going to do what we going to do. Lakini mtumishi wake Gehazi alihangaika kwenda kurudi akakosa amani. Lakini akasema kwamba hapa tumeangamia tumekuisha hatutoki hapa. Akata akaka kamutuuliza kwa sababu yeye alikuwa anamtumania Mungu. Akamwambia ungejua watu ambao wametuzingira hapa. These people are chariot with fire. This is a consuming fire. You know the, the, the book of Revelation talks about the fire that never quakes, the fire that never goes out. Uh, kitabu kiki cha ufuro yohana kina ugea kusu moto ambao hausimiki. I mean you throw water and it is just there. Ata ukitupa maji moto ule ule hausimiki. The fire that came out, that came down when Elisha called the party, he, he said, the fire come down and he did it. moto wapo wakati Elia alishusha moto kutoka minguni. Ile ni aina ya moto ule kwa wapo. The fire that consumed the water, that is the fire that was, that was right there. That's the fire that was there. Uyu moto uu, ndiyo ule moto amba ulikuna wazimiki. The unquaked fire of God. Moto ule amba hausimiki. And you know the Bible said he has made his minister flames of fire. Unquaked fire, you know. Akasema kwamba watumishi wake he made them he made his minister flames of fire. He made them flames of fire. Ali alipadilisha watumishi wake kawafanya kuwa nguso za 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 moto. So we understand that faith is important. 
Sasa hapa tunaelewa kwamba imani ni kitu muhimu sana. Because if you face the devil without faith, he's gonna that that's the opportunity for the devil to actually bring you down. Wakati tuna wakati tuna msongelea shetani bila kuwa na imani, sasa utakwenda kwa mboga yake. He's gonna he's gonna pray on that. that. That's the same thing that happened with Peter in the water, same thing that happened with Thomas. Satan pray on on them having doubts. Hii ndio sasa inaonekana wakati eh uh, Thomas au wakati Petro alikuwa anasimama kwenye maji. And, and so we got to have faith. And the third point is we have to be prepared. Na kitu cha tatu ni kwamba tunapaswa kuwa tayari kujiandaa. We have to be prepared in prayer. Ni lazima tujiandae katika maombi. In love katika upendo testing every spirit to see whether this is the spirit of God. Na ni lazima tuwe sasa tuwe na tunaangalia roho ambazo anatufingira hii roho ni ya kweli au si ya kweli and in order for us to test that we need wisdom from god sasa kusudi tupate ku kutofautisha sa roho hizi ni lazima tupate hekima kutoka kwa Mungu. And James said and, and you know James said whoever need wisdom whoever lacks wisdom let him ask the father who grants it all free. Kwenye, you know? kwenye kitabu hiki cha Yakobo unasoma kwamba neno Mungu nasema kwamba yeyote yule ambaye anahitaji hekima na amuombe Mungu ambaye anatoa bure. And I'm going to go with I'm going to go over with you guys with how uh, you know the basic way of discerning whether this is 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 the spirit of god or whether this is not the spirit of god nitakwenda kuapitisha kwenye maneno ni tuangalie pamoja jisikali tunaweza kuchambua roho kama ni za kweli au kama ni za uongo and first of all i'm going to start first with 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 this is a very basic verse that i think everybody should know and na tutaanzia kwenye mstari huu ambao utakuwa ni Uh, rahisi kwa kila mmoja labda unajulikana kwa kila mmoja and, and you know and this is the, the, the works of the flesh or, or the, the fruits of the work of the flesh what happens when you walk in the flesh Ii, all, of, all of this are the products of it hii ni kuonyesha matunda au mazao ya kutumika ndani ya mwili you got to read the book of galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 wa galatia sura ya 5 kuanzia Wagaratia sura ya tano Wagaratia tano 19 to 21 19:21 Biblia inasema hivi Basi matendo ya mwili ni dhahiri ndio hayo uasherati uchafu ufisadi shirini ibada ya sanamu uchawi uadui ugomvi wivu hasira fitina faraka uzushi usuda uleni ulafi na mambo yanayofanana na hayo katika hayo nawaambia mapema kama nilivyokwisha kuambia ya kwamba watu wasendao mambo ya jeshi hiyo hawataweza kufanya wa Mungu this, this one says now the words of the flesh manifest which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, emulation, wrath, sedition, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, reviling, such like of which I tell you before, as I also told you in the in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So we see this are the traits of evil spirit Tunaweza kuona sasa mitengo ambayo shetani anaileta. Even when Jesus crossed the sea of Galilee, when he came down, when the man was cutting himself, when he came when he came in front of Jesus Christ, you could see that once the first thing the man was dirty. Ukiangalia okay, wakati Yesu Kristo alivuka uh, ziwa lile la Galilaya, 
Unaona kwamba kuna mtu ambaye alikuwa anajitatakata. And, and the, first, the first thing you saw is the person was dirty. Na huyo mtu alikuwa mchafu. That's, that's one of the manifestation of the work of the flesh. Na hiyo sasa unaweza kuona kwamba ilikuwa ni, ni, ni uzao wa, wa matendo ya mwili. This man was not in his right mind. Alikuwa akili yake haikuwa inasimama vizuri. These are all the traits of an evil spirit. Unaweza ku, kuona jinsi shetani anatumika. And every spirit in the book of 1 John it says that every spirit that is of God na ukisoma Yohana wa kwanza unaweza Biblia inasema kwamba uh, roho yoyote ya kimungu every spirit of God roho yote ya Mungu will always confess Jesus is Lord will always be with God will always be in agreement with God roho yote ya Mungu itakuwa inaonyesha itakuwa inatangaza jina la Yesu and every spirit that is with Jesus that's not in agreement with Jesus na roho yoyote ya kishetani Every spirit that's not in agreement with with the spirit of Jesus. We learn that that is not of God. So we gotta be prepared. Sasa ni lazima to be able to to make a difference between whether this is the spirit of God or whether this is not the spirit of God. Tujiandae kupata kutofautisha roho kama ni za kweli au kama sio za kweli. John says test every spirit to see whether this spirit is of God. Unaona kwamba Yohana aliandika kwamba ni lazima mtofautishe hizo roho kama ni za kweli au kama sio za kweli. Because the fight that we fight is the fight of the spirit not kwa, the flesh. Kwa sababu vita vyetu sio vita vya mwili bali ni vita vya roho. I feel like uh, I'm going to ask everybody to stand up so we can all pray. Nina wewe ninawatakeni sasa kila mmoja tusimame ili tuombe. First of all, I want everybody to pray. I want everybody to act to submit themselves to God. Hapa maombi haya ni maombi ya kuchinyenyekeza mbele za Mungu. Say you be like Revelation 3:20. Jesus is knocking at the door. Maneno ya Mungu kwenye furaha wa Yohana sura ya 3:20 inasema tazama nimesimama mrangoni. And I'm knocking the door. And whoever is calling na gonga kwenye mlango. Whoever is can hear me will open his heart and I will dwell in him and him in me. Na yeyote yule ambaye atanisikia na kufungua nitakwenda nani atakula pamoja nami na yeye nami nitakula pamoja nami. I want you guys to do a prayer and I want you guys sasa tutakwenda kuomba ninachotaka mfanye I want you guys to open your heart for Jesus to come in. Ni kwamba mfungue mioyo yenu ili Yesu Kristo aingie kwenu. Submitting yourself to Jesus. Muti ini Kristo because he is not in the door. Kwa sababu yuko amesimama kwenye mlango wa wa moyo wako. Let us all pray in the name of Jesus. Tunapenda kuomba. I come in front of you Father. I open my heart to Jesus. I open my heart Jesus Christ so that you could come in and dwell in me and dine with me so that I may be obedient to your word so that I may respect your word Father God so that I may not just be a hero of the word of God but I want to be a doer of God Jesus Christ I want you Yesu mwenye wangu I want you to dwell inside my heart Yesu Kristo yeye ndani ya moyo wangu I want you to dwell inside of your heart Nataka kuishi na kubaki I open my heart I open my spirit unto you Uwa huyo wangu moyo wangu That you dwell in me that you take control Tembeze nataka niongoze Holy Spirit lead Oh mtatifu Lead the Holy Spirit Mtatifu niongoze Lead the Holy Spirit Mtakatifu niongoze In the name of Jesus Christ Kachina wa Yesu Kristo Amen. 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 Now that you submitted yourself to God. Now you are ready to face the devil. I know, I know you guys know your problems. Najua kwamba kuna I know that Satan is tempting you. Najua kwamba shetani anapigana nanyi. 
anybody that's a Christian, Satan will always try to fight you. Na tuwa kwamba ukiwa ni mkristo, shetana takuwa na kazi ya kupondoa kwenye mapenzi ya kwa. And so what I want you to do is pray and cast out Satan away from your life, away from your family. Ni nato taka sasa maombi haya ni kwamba uombe shetani aondoke kwenye familia yako, kwenye maisha yako. I want you to stand up with confidence and faith and say you Satan, I cast you out in the name of Jesus. Na taka usimame kwa imani useme shetani ondoka kwa mbu. I cast you, you spirit of sickness. Away of you, you spirit of sickness. Be gone. I want you to cast away with confidence. Stop praying. Stop praying in the name of God. I cast every spirit of sickness. Every spirit of sickness. Every spirit that is not in the name of Jesus. I cast it away. Amen. Amen. Amen.